times that we're not really sure of what that looks like for not only our households, but also our businesses. Uh, this could be, you know, a couple of months. This could be several months. And that is the part that is making this so uncertain and so difficult for business owners is that there really is no timeline here that we can take a look at and follow and say, okay, we've got a plan for this for the next three months, or we've got a plan for this for the next six months, 18 months, 24 months. We don't know. Is it next month? Businesses are starting to open across the country. So are we going to bounce back from this really quickly? Or is this something that we're going to be still be dealing with in six months? And we're going to talk a little bit about that today and how we plan and forecast for that. Um, again, just not knowing what it's going to look like on the other side. Many businesses have made a drastic pivot at this point where they've made this adjustment and this change and maybe they're offering a service or a product they've never offered before and that's what's getting them through so on the other side of this what does this look like does that new offering you've put out is that something that's still going to be needed and desired by your customers and your clients on the other side of this or is that just a temporary need that you're feeling filling during covid times and so really mapping out what, what we did before, what we're doing now, and what we're going to do after this, and what all of that looks like for us as business owners. I'm doing this in my own business every single day, guys. I feel like I'm making some sort of little pivot every week as things are changing, trying to stay on top of all of this and how that map and that plan looks. And so that's what all business owners should be doing through this. We have to have that framework. Again, I said, you know, this could be businesses are starting to open. So this could be, maybe we have, maybe it's a V-shaped recession where we've hit rock bottom and now we're gonna skyrocket back up to what normal looks like for us. Maybe it's more of a U-shaped recession where we're gonna have this lull and it's gonna slowly start to come back up and get back to normal. And maybe it's, maybe it's this L-shaped um, that it takes us a while to come back. We don't know, and that is the hard part as business owners is planning for what this is gonna look like for the next several months as we go through this. So this is something I pulled from, I believe I pulled this from Forbes. Um, this is not something I created, but this is kind of, this is something that has been put out as what this could potentially look like as we go through this. So, you know, we're sitting here May of 2020, we're like right in this area here somewhere. Um, so, you know, we had some peak cases, we've, it looks like it's going to start to come down. But then when we start going back to work, so we've got people starting back now, we've got some businesses that are like, I'm not doing this until, you know, we're not reopening and bringing people out of social distancing until June or July till we see what happens with this first round. And so at what point through this, is there going to be another peak potentially in the fall, winter of 2021? that causes this to all occur again. And that's the uncertainty that we don't know that we're dealing with and what we have to really take a look at and plan for. And so when we're, um, when we're planning for this, you've got to plan for this is what I think is going to happen. And you also have to plan for your best and your worst case scenarios. There really just is no way around that to make sure that you have this plan. We could put a budget or a forecast into place for a business owner and it could be completely off because of things that are going on. And so you really have to plan for all of these scenarios and knowing what that looks like and planning for that. So I want you to think about this. What would happen to your business if this goes on for one more month? How is your business going to be impacted and affected by that if we've got one more month of this going on? What if it goes on for another four to five months before you can get back to fully pre-COVID operations. What does that look like for your business? What if this goes on for another 12 to 18 months? What does that look like? Have you made a pivot that's gonna allow you to survive and go forward that long? And then think about this, what's gonna happen to your business if this happens again with the next major virus outbreak? We have seen some completely unprecedented situations go on in these past couple months. We've seen stimulus payments out to individuals like we've never seen before. We've seen governments bailing out small businesses through funding opportunities like we've never seen before. We've 
seen the government literally shut down hundreds of thousands of businesses and say, you cannot operate. So who's to say if this happens again in fall or winter coming up that they don't do this again? Who's to say that if there's another pandemic, you know, two, three, five years from now, that they don't revert back to the precedence that was set with this one and shut businesses down again? It really, it's created an uncertainty that is a little scary to look at. And I'm very much a pessimist. And so it's hard for me to say that. But there is this piece of it that is really scary based on what we've seen through this and what the government set precedence for. So how do you prepare your business regardless of the timeline? We're going to go over a couple things today that are in um, the legislation and then a couple things that you need to be planning for. But what we've been telling our clients is at this point, you really have to do everything in your power to save your business. That is your number one job right now. If you're not operating, if you're operating at minimal capacity, if you're operating through a pivot modality, whatever that looks like right now, you have to do everything in your power to save your business. You have to get creative and pivot to those new revenue sources and potentially setting up those new revenue sources that are not just COVID dependent. Setting up new revenue sources that are gonna take you through this and on through your business even after COVID and become a new revenue source for you. That is the ideal pivot, is something that's gonna last beyond this that is not just reliant on this. Use the relief funds that you've obtained wisely. Um, I'd like to know if, people don't mind dropping in the Q&A box or the chat box. I'm curious to know, have you gotten PPP funds? Have you gotten idle funds at this point? Have you gotten city, state, or local grants? Um, what does that look like for your business and where does that leave you as far as those funds? So if you guys wouldn't mind, I'd love to have you drop that in and just kind of tell us where you're at with that piece of it. But you have to take advantage of the legislation. The hot topics lately for what we've been discussing with people, what is out there in general in the news, what is out there with a lot of conversations has been the PPP and the idle funds. Those have been the two biggest things that we've been taking a look at. But there are other things in the legislation that we wanna talk about and look at. And then the last thing we're telling our clients is you have to forecast your cash, you have to budget to survive now and thrive later. It really is all about that. It, it doesn't matter the dollar amount of the funds you're getting from the PPP or the idle. None of that piece of it matters if you're not using those wisely and using them to your advantage along with the other legislation that's out here. So really quick backstory about me so you know who's speaking here for those of you that don't know me. I've been in the accounting and tax industry for 17 years. Since all of this started, I've been flooding our community with information on what all of this means. I've done more than 100 hours of research and navigating all things CARES Act related at this point. Um, and it's changing all the time. And that's why I'm 100 hour or more hours into it right now is because the process here, what we've been seeing, um, it is, it's ever changing. We are getting things going on that, you know, we get guidance one day that then the very next day changes, or we hear something one day and an hour later it changes. Uh, some of the first trainings I've done on this for business owners in my community, you know, while I'm in the middle of it, m there's emails popping into my inbox that are changing things I'm saying on that training. And so it's, the difficulty and the uncertainty is not just in businesses, but it's in the programs that are out there as well, because we're not really sure what that's going to look like. Um, all right, so what we're going to cover today is we're going to cover some of the new legislation that comes about with the CARES Act, and we're going to talk a little bit about forecasting and budgeting through this. So the first one I want to talk about is the payroll tax deferral. This is section 2302 of the CARES Act, which is an 880 page bill. Uh, for any of you that have read it alongside me, yay, it's put, put us to sleep, I'm sure more than once. Um, but this particular portion of the legislation allows us to defer 100% of your payroll taxes. Um, for, sorry, that's, that's a little incorrect. 100% of the employer portion of the Social Security tax. So 100% of certain pieces of your payroll tax for two years. And so this is for any businesses with employees. It's also for self-employed individuals who are subject to self-employment tax. And so this is one that we're gonna spend a little bit of time on today because this is one that even when you've qualified for the PPP, even when you've qualified for the idle funds, 
this one is one you can still take advantage of to stretch those dollars and really be strategic about your planning around that piece. So this implies, applies to the employer portion, which is 6.2% of the Social Security tax. It does not apply to the Medicare tax and it does not apply to your income tax. Does not apply to employee taxes. The trust fund portion that you're withholding from employees' paychecks does not apply to that. We are watching legislation very closely as there is there are conversations going on now about potential payroll tax holidays, which would put more funds back in the employee's pocket as well as they would potentially stop uh, the requirement for some payroll withholdings on them. And so we're taking a look at, we're watching closely for what's gonna come out on that. I mean, already since, what early March, you know, in some in some states late February, but really early March is when this all started nationwide. And since then, we've already really seen four four legislative pieces that have come out through all of this. Um, and we're we're potentially watching for this fifth one with a payroll tax holiday that could be coming out as well. So what this particular piece is is this for this is for tax deposits that are due to be made during the window of March 27th through December 31st. So essentially, it's estimated tax payments for first, second, and third quarters of 2020 because it's those payment due dates. So that's what would fall there. Your first and second quarter estimated tax payments for self-employed individuals are both due July 15th along with any 1040 tax payments. And I believe most states are on board right now. Um, it's been hard to keep up with all the states, but I know Colorado for sure is on board with that. But I think most states are on board with delaying due dates and payment dates as well. So it's those three payments for self-employed individuals. For employers, this means that your federal tax deposits due from the beginning of April through December 31st, you can potentially defer part of these into the following years. So all employers and self-employed individuals are gonna to qualify to defer these deposits and payments of the employer portion of the social security tax. So for self-employed individuals, what this means is that your self-employment tax that you pay, which is effectively rounding, rounding out 15%, you can reduce that by 6.2%, not be penalized, and pay that later, which we're gonna go over those due dates. For employers, you can offset having to pay those now and pay them later without any penalty as well. So when don't you qualify? So this is a conversation that we've been having with a lot of people because the way this was initially understood by several people was that if you get the PPP funds that you do not qualify for this at all, that if you get the idle funds, you do not qualify for this at all. And that is not correct. We've had some guidance put out directly by the IRS that we've been looking over. Oh, sorry, I was grabbing my sheet from them. Um, we've had some guidance come out directly from them and they have clearly stated that you can qualify for this even if you've received PPP funds. When you stop qualifying for this, is effective the very day that the bank says your PPP loan has been forgiven. At that point, from that point forward, you do not qualify for this any longer for the rest of 2020. But what that means, and this is where we can be really strategic with these funds, this is where you can really stretch these dollars, is you get a loan for the PPP, and you know 75% of this has to be used for payroll in order to be forgiven. The other 25% is allocated towards mortgage interest for a commercial uh, mortgage, rent for your business, utilities, and certain other interest payments. That's the other 25% of this that can be allocated. Does that mean you can only use 75% for payroll? No, it does not. I literally just got that question from someone on Facebook as we were getting started on here. Um, so that is not what that means at all. Um, but it means that you have to use at least 75% of it for that purpose. And so with that, um, if you use this tax deferral piece and you choose to defer the social security, the employer portion of the social security, while you're waiting on forgiveness, you've now taken 6.2% of your payroll costs that would have been utilized by these PPP funds and you're allowing those funds to be used elsewhere for other qualified expenses in your business. Uh, conversation I had with a client yesterday was, well, if I do that though, there's a chance that I may not be able to use 100% of these funds for these purposes. 
okay, what's the downside to that? You have a 1% interest rate on a loan that you're paid, that's on two year terms with payment deferrals of six months. So effectively you have 18 months to pay whatever's not forgiven on 1% interest rate. If that's gonna allow you to stretch these funds farther and use them for other rent payments, utilities, additional payroll beyond the eight weeks, that might be a really smart decision to utilize and take a look at. Um, so that's the point where you, you no longer qualify is if you've received the PPP funds and you've gotten approval from the bank that the funds are forgiven. So for most people who have received PPP funds or are waiting on PPP funds right now, this is a great option to utilize to keep cash in your business. So when are the payments due if you opt to defer these? 50% of these are due by December 31st of 2021. So that is 19 months from now. You have 19 months to make the first payments on this without penalty. Then the remaining 50% of this is due 12 months later by December 31st of 2022. So essentially what you're doing is you're not getting out of these payments. You're just deferring them and figuratively kicking the can down the road. But what that means for us as business owners and entrepreneurs is that we may now be in a situation where we can take a look at this and say, okay, I'm in a cash crunch right now. I need cash in my business right now. And this may be an option to keep some additional cash in your business instead of pushing it out. Um, so based on that, how do we then try to figure out how I want to word this? Um, you've done this, you're keeping this cash in your business, but now you need to plan. This is where planning really comes in is you need to plan to be able to use this down the road and make sure that you're using these funds wisely, but you're also setting yourself up in 2021 and 2022 to be able to pay these tax payments then. So it's, it's a decrease of expenses and an increase of cash right now, but then you have to put the actions and the steps in place to plan to be able to pay these in 2021 and 2022 in order to avoid the penalties. So it's not just that this is an option now, there is, there is some long-term planning that has to go into effect with this. And as long as these taxes are paid timely by those deferral dates, they are going to be considered timely paid and you will not have any late payment penalties on this. This was a big concern of mine, of many of my colleagues, of many business owners when this first came out was looking at this and going, well, what does this then look like on the other side of this as far as penalties and these types of things? What does that what does that mean? Because I don't want to defer these payments if this is going to cost me penalties down the road. But the IRS has come out with some official guidance that they, they are not going to have penalties on these. So just make sure that you're planning that long term for being able to defer those payments. So that was the deferral. Now let's talk about the employee retention credit, which is section 2301 of the CARES Act. And this is a refundable tax credit against payroll taxes. This is one that not everybody is going to qualify for. So all employers, regardless of size, can qualify for this, except government agencies and those who take any of the loans. So if you take a PPP loan, if you take an EIDL loan, if you're approved for either of those, you don't qualify for this tax credit. But if you have opted not to take any of those loans because you didn't find it necessary for your business, or for some reason you've not been approved by the banks or the SBA for any of these loans, or for one reason or another, you missed the deadlines or missed the funding opportunities and it just hasn't been available to you, then you could qualify for this one. And this is a really good one to use as that backup plan if you've not taken any of those funds. Your business has to have been fully or partially suspended by government order. So that is pretty much any business that is a non-essential business right now. So if your business does not fall into an essential business category, then you can make sure or you can qualify for this if you've not taken any of the funds. Guys, if you have questions as we're going along, please make sure to drop those into the Q&A box. I do have a hard stop at noon. Um, I am watching 
questions as we're going. So if you have those, please drop those in and I'll make sure that we're getting those answered as we go. The other way that is your gross receipts are below 50% of the comparable prior year quarter. And as soon as those gross receipts go above 80% of the prior year quarter, you no longer qualify. So these are calculated each quarter. So when we're looking at this for quarter two, you're gonna look at your projected gross receipts from April through June. And for that quarter, if your projection is below 50% of the comparable of 2019, same month, same quarter, then you could qualify for this. So this is where forecasting really comes in hand because how do you know if you're going to qualify? Do you, do you apply? try to utilize this piece of the program. And then what happens if your revenue goes above 80%? So this is where some planning and some forecasting really comes into play. So this particular credit gives you a maximum of $5,000 per employee. That is based on being eligible for 50% of the qualifying wages paid up to $10,000 per employee. And you can include in this a portion of the cost of employer provided health care. So, if again, if you've not qualified for PPP, you've not taken PPP, you've not qualified for idle, you've not taken idle, any of those items, then this is an option you can use and potentially look at getting this credit. So you, this credit is going to be claimed on our second quarter through our fourth quarter 941 forms. We are waiting on some updated 941 forms to come out by the IRS that are going to allow this credit to be claimed. So we're not quite sure what that's going to look like on the 941 yet, but there is that piece there that we are going to be able to see on the return to be able to claim this credit. You can get an advance on this credit by filing form 7200, which is another form that if you want to look at the advance, that form is available and out there. So how does this work? This is where cash flow can really predicting and projecting the cash flow and managing it can really benefit from this here. So let's say you're gonna utilize this credit because this is the one that you're opting for. And so you're gonna not remit payroll tax deposits for qualifying wages. When the revised form 941 ones are released for Q2, there's gonna be line items for this and that's where you're gonna claim this. Or you take the form 7200 for when your credit is going to exceed your liability and you file with that. And there's no penalty for late payments of federal tax deposits on this. So what does this all mean in business terms to you as a business owner? What this means is that you could potentially not submit your federal tax deposits for payroll for second quarter. Run the calculation to see what your credit could be based on the up to $10,000 or the $10,000 max per employee with the $5,000 and look and see. You could file form 7200. If you do all these calculations and run this math, you could file form 7200 asking the government for an advance on that credit now. That advance on that credit then comes to you before the taxes are even due. You use that advance to assist you to cover operating expenses, to cover payroll, to do these things. So essentially these credits could eliminate your 941 tax liability depending on the employees and the pay rates and all of these things that have to come into this calculation. But this is a huge opportunity if you're not utilizing the PPP or the idle funds, this is a huge opportunity to get some cash back into your business now. Let's say you don't want to file the Form 7200 because you're not sure what those wages are going to look like. Maybe you run a restaurant or a salon and you're not sure fully when you're going to be able to get back to full staff. You're not fully sure who's going to return and who's not going to return. And so based on that, maybe you don't want to take the 7200. Maybe that's a little, maybe you're a little risk averse and that's a risk that you're not willing to take quite yet. So instead, you don't remit your payroll taxes and you work with your payroll person or your accountant as you're going through this and you watch those numbers and you figure out at what point do I need to start paying these payroll taxes? And instead of paying the federal tax deposits, again, you're using that cash in your business for operating expenses to cover payroll for employees to offset the decrease of revenue that your business has right now. I've always wanted to say this, but wait, there's more. Beyond those two items for businesses, we're also looking at net operating losses. So NOLs from 2018 and 2019 could put money back in your bank. There have been some changes to the way NOLs are being treated through the CARES Act. And so if you had a net operating loss in 2018 or 2019, 
you need to be reaching out to your accountant if they haven't already reached out to you and find out if it makes sense for you to possibly amend these returns, claim those NOLs as they're allowed through the CARES Act and be able to put some money back in your pocket even sooner. Charitable donation limitations have been increased. So if you are looking at that avenue, I, personally, I think a lot of people, a lot of the businesses we've seen struggling right now are not really looking at this, but it is something I just wanted to throw out there for you to keep in mind. Retirement withdrawals. So we talked a lot about the business. On the personal side, maybe your business is barely making it through. Maybe you've got decreased revenue and you're struggling to get the business to go through. And so in turn, your paycheck, your personal pay from the business has been impacted as well. You can take retirement withdrawals that may not be subject to the 10% penalty as long as you take them based on the, the guidelines for what qualifies as a COVID disbursement or distribution. So with this, the cool thing is, is beyond this, you can actually take these withdrawals out and you can pay the tax on them over three years. So if you pull it out in 2020, normally you would have that 10% penalty if you're not a required age. And then you'd have to pay that tax on it all in 2020. Now, if it's a COVID related distribution, you avoid the 10% penalty and you can spread that tax out to pay a third of it in 2020, a third in 2021, and a third in 2022, making that tax burden a little less heavy for you as well. You also have the option to be able to um, take the, if you want to repay it, if you want to treat the distribution as a loan, then that loan piece of it then allows you, you can repay it over three years. Normally under current or on pre-COVID law, you would have to repay it by April 15th. So there's some, several varying dates in there that we're not gonna get into on this call, but now you can repay that over three years and avoid paying the tax on it that way. So there's some really cool pieces on that retirement amount that's come in. Employers are also now able to pay up to a certain dollar amount of employees' student loans to help out their employees. So there's some employers that may be in this position where, you know, maybe they're trying to help their employees and do all they can. And so this allows that to, um, allows employers to be able to pay those student loans. Um, Rachel, this is being streamed live to Facebook as well, um, and will also most likely end up being on Elevating Profits YouTube channel, so you can catch a replay there. I'm not sure how long it'll stay up. It depends on how much these laws change over the next several days. If they change drastically, I will be pulling it down so that I'm not, I don't have misinformation out there. Um, all right, so let's talk about COVID cash forecasting and budgeting. So this is kind of a timeline I've laid out based on a few things I've seen. So let's say that, let's look at a timeline from today to 24 to 36 months, so two to three years out from now. And so how long was it before we started losing cash profit every day? For a lot of businesses that we've seen, this has been about 15 days from the beginning of this when their business was shut down or when they had to go on a few things. Um, Sorry, reading one of the questions here. Uh, yeah, so good good comment there, Harlan. If you do use a payroll service, so ADP, uh, QuickBooks, Patriot, Gusto, any of those, you do need to make sure that you're talking to them and figuring out how they're working in their systems to allow you to not pay all of the payroll taxes because a lot of those systems pull those out automatically for you, but a lot of those are actually putting in some processes in the back end office for them to be able to treat these. Um, so make sure you're taking a look at that. Um, all right, so back to this. So 15 days for most businesses was when we started to lose cash profit in our business. So how long until we have no more cash on hand? If you, if you still have cash on hand, how long until you don't? Or maybe you're already in this situation where you no longer have cash on hand. For most businesses that we're talking to, this projection is about 60 days out. Once they hit that 60 day mark, which realistically is here in the next week or so, they're gonna be in a situation where they don't have any cash on hand. What happens four months out from the start of this? So looking at July, how long until we have no access to additional credits loans? Do we wanna use credit 
Do we want to pull on lines of credit? Do we want to use credit cards to get through this? You have to really take a look at that and understand that piece of it and what that looks like for you. There are in business, there's three types of debts. There's leveraged debt, bridged debt, and anchored debt. And so leveraged debt is debt that you are using and you're leveraging it to make more money. You're using the money from the debt to make more money. Uh, bridge debt is predictable. This is debt that you're taking on to cover a gap. There's a gap in cash flow and it's predictable. Maybe you've got expenses that need to be covered and you have accounts receivable that are coming in next week, but you've got expenses today. And so you take out a bridge loan to get you through this week, knowing you can pay it back next week when that accounts receivable comes in. That's bridged debt. Anchored debt is a debt that there's simply no plan, no predictability. It's just a debt. It is literally a liability on your books. And so when you're taking on these loans, whether it be the PPP, whether it be the idle, whether it be any other lines of credits or credit cards that you're looking at, I really want to encourage you to look at it from those three angles, leveraged debt, bridged debt, and anchored debt. Which one are you taking on? What is the plan? We don't want anchored debt in our business. We either want bridge debt or leverage debt. And so utilize these funds to leverage or to bridge things, not to anchor your business coming out of this. And that's what we're seeing a lot of businesses doing is they're taking on these loans, they're accepting these funds, and they have absolutely no plan for what comes next in their business. So really looking, when you're talking about forecasting and budgeting in your business, really looking at what can we do to make it for the next 12, 24, possibly even 36 months before things are completely 100% back to normal for our business. And again, I'm an optimist. I'm really, really hoping and praying and doing all the fancy dances that I can to hope that this does not last that long. But it unfortunately is a realistic possibility that there are several businesses that it's going to take a year, two years, three years to get completely back to normal on this. And so how do you forecast for survival versus growth? That's one thing that we're really talking about is there is a difference between forecasting and budgeting for surviving this and forecasting and budgeting to grow from this. And we have worked with clients to be able to forecast and budget for growth and not just survival, but we're looking at both angles when we're talking about this. How long can your cash that you have right now today last you before you hit what I'm referring to as the downward death spiral of business? How long is that cash going to last you before you're in a situation where there really just is not any more left? There's not another option. There's no funding available. And now you're really looking at taking on anchored debt to get through. How long do you need to prepare for? This is going to vary for every business. But how long do you, are you a six-month person? Do you, does your business need to prepare for a year, two years, three years? What is your survival plan what does that map look like for your business? This is something you need to take into consideration when you're forecasting and budgeting. How long until you have negative profits if you don't already? If you're still operating in the black where you have profits, great, but how long is that gonna last if you can't get revenue streaming in quicker than what it is now and back to a normal phase? How long until your cash runs out at your current burn rate? This is something I'm realizing a a lot of business owners don't understand is their burn rate. The burn rate is how quickly you're running through the revenues coming into your business. If you don't know this, you need to figure this out because this is going to be the predictor of how long you can survive. If your burn rate is exceeding your incoming revenue, then you are going to hit the red very, very quickly if you haven't already. So figuring out what your burn rate is, figuring out how you can adjust that burn rate to be slower. How can you slow down the outflow of cash and, and speed up the income inflow of cash to make sure that you can go through this and survive. How long until your access to all credit cards and loans run out? We've got the PPP, we've got the idle, we've got these things that have come in. Now you know a little bit about the tax deferral and the tax credits that are out there. But how long is this going to get you through realistically? This is what you need to sit down and factor out for businesses or for your business. How do we extend your survival time as long as possible? That is really what a budget and a forecast right now during COVID times is about, is extending your survival timeline, figuring out every nuance of it, the good, the bad, the ugly, the great, whatever that looks like for you, but figuring out every little nuance of this to understand exactly how long your survival timeline looks like and then doing everything you can to adjust that. So 
how do we think outside of the box? So this is something that we've seen with a lot of restaurants lately, and I've had a couple clients doing this, is we went from full dining or full service, and now they're, they've got either micro locations or takeout, and this is how they've adapted. Well, for some of them, these micro locations are now a permanent part of their plan moving forward because they're doing so well. Do we anticipate they're going to do as well once the full restaurant is back up and opening? We don't know, but we've made predictions for yes, they will, no, they'll slow down, or no, they're gonna completely drop, and maybe it's not financially sensible to continue operating those micro locations. But looking at this, understanding what it looks like to reinvest your cost structure with lower expenses, new revenue streams, a way to break even and even possibly make profit with these new models and these pivots that businesses are doing right now. That is one of the key things that we need to be looking at for your business when we're talking forecasting and budgeting. So your business recovery strategy, a lot of businesses are through the initial steps of the survival strategy. And so what we're focused on right now, what a lot of businesses are talking to us about is the recovery strategy piece of this. What does this look like now that we've got to get through this recovery piece? You have to assess the liquidity of your business. What is the liquid assets that you have available? Bank accounts, checking, savings, lines of credits. What is the liquid assets you have in your business that you can pull on to survive this and recover from it? You have to prepare a budget. And this is not a budget in the traditional sense of how we would create a budget you know, three, four months ago. This is a budget that is very different. You have to look at it differently because the way businesses are, the business world in general has so drastically changed in the last three months that preparing a budget is nothing like what it was a few months ago. And so you have to prepare a budget that is going, what I'm calling a COVID budget. It looks a little differently and it has to to get you through this. You've got to calculate that burn rate. If you don't know your burn rate, I really want to encourage you to sit down today and figure out exactly what that looks like for you. This is one formula in your business that can help you change things today just like that if you know your burn rate you can figure out how to slow it down you need to pre prepare three versions of your forecasting cash flow you need to prepare the ideal version of if this changes businesses are starting to open up across the nation if if that reopening of business stays and we don't have another shutdown what does this look like for your business the second version you need to prepare is the best case scenario of, okay, you know, we're actually back to normal here in a couple months. What does that forecast look like for you? And then you need to prepare that worst case scenario and you need to be realistic and honest and truthful with this of, okay, business is reopened, we're able to go back to business, but then COVID spikes again and we all get shut down again in the fall or the winter. You need to prepare and forecast for these three scenarios. When you're forecasting for your business, you need to have three versions of it always. Whether we're talking COVID or we're talking whatever the new normal for business looks like, you need to have three versions of this so that you understand what the different possible scenarios are. But even more so now, you need to forecast based on potential timelines of what does that look like if things go back to normal quickly? What does it look like if things go back to normal, you know, not so quick, but not super slow. And what does that look like if this takes two to three years for things to get back to normal? You need to take a look at that for your business. And then you need to create a healthy balance sheet. One thing we've been talking a lot about lately is how we turn liabilities on our balance sheet into assets and how we make sure that the assets on our balance sheet don't become liabilities. And really looking at this from that standpoint and creating a healthy balance sheet. Pre-COVID, every business we ever talked to was how do we improve profits? How do we make more? How do we show more income? How do we improve that bottom line on the profit and loss? And those conversations have shifted so much right now that now people are talking about how do we create a healthy balance sheet? How do we get more assets and less liabilities so that when we're going to banks to talk about getting lending that's going to allow us to either leverage it or bridge things, how do we have a healthy balance sheet that looks like that? And so that thought process around the financials for business has adjusted a little bit. Um, so Sharon, this is not, that's noon Mountain Standard Time, which is here in about 17 minutes. So it's not a two hour webinar. I apologize. 
so I have a hard stop at noon Mountain Standard Time. It's 1143 right now. So not a two hour webinar. It's a one hour webinar today. Um, so we want to be able to create those healthy balance sheets. We're honestly almost done, Sharon. If you can hang out for a couple more minutes, we've got two more slides. Um, and so creating a budget now, as I've mentioned, is different than what it was two months ago. And so I'm doing next week on Friday, I'm doing a free training on creating a COVID budget and kind of walking through what that looks like and how that looks a little differently than what we've seen in the past and really being able to strategize that for your business. And so I'm gonna have Kelsey go ahead and drop the link in the chat for me, if you would, Kelsey. Um, and so what this particular train, and this is free, completely free guys. This is normally part of my inner circle trainings that I do with my private clients, but I want to offer this free because again, as I've mentioned several times, if you've watched me at all over the last month, is that I'm really on a mission to help 500 businesses survive this. And so this particular one, we're gonna be talking about creating a budget specifically for COVID. There's some certain things that you need to focus on to create it to survive and thrive COVID for, COVID for your business. And so that's what this training next week is really going to be about. Um, that is going to be Friday, May 8th. I've calendared it for an hour and a half to allow for Q&A as we go through this. That is going to be 2 to 3.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. If that link is in the chat, for those of you on Facebook, we will drop it in on the comments there as well. Um, so if that's something that you're looking at, if you're one of those businesses that is getting ready to go back to operating, if you're about ready to open up doors, or maybe you're not sure, maybe you've been operating, but it's been at a minimized capacity, then I want to encourage you to jump on and let's talk through the budgets for your business. Um, there's going to be some how-to and some trainings on here, but we're going to take a lot of Q&As on that training as well to be able to make sure that we're answering specific questions for everyone also. And so again, that's going to be Friday, May 8th, 2 to 3.30 Mountain Standard Time. The link is in the chat. Um, that is what I have for training today. I'm going to hang out for a couple of minutes and make sure if anybody has questions, please go ahead and pop those in now. Um, and we will make sure to get those answered. But otherwise, if you don't have any questions, you are more than welcome to start hopping off at this point because that is all I had for content. I do want to thank everyone for jumping on. Um, I know we've got several people on here um, that are business owners. We've got a couple tax professionals on here as well. And so please ask the questions. Like I said, I've spent over 100 hours researching this. Um, we do a lot of CFO consulting in our business for business owners. And so when it comes to that budget and forecasting piece, that really is, that's, that's my passion. That's, that's what I love doing. And so that really is where we're focused on in this next training on May 8th is creating this COVID budget and understanding how this is different. I promise you, if you had a budget in January, you need to redo it based on COVID. And that's what I'm seeing when I'm talking to a lot of people is they haven't done that revised budget based on COVID. So when they're looking at things, they're still operating off a pre-COVID budget and not a COVID related budget. And then you really have to do that budget to get to the forecast. The budget is the framework for the forecast, but the forecasting is really where the rubber meets the road in your business and really where you can start to see traction and gain some insight into how you're projecting. Um, so let me jump over and make sure we don't have any questions here. Um, all right, it doesn't look like we have any questions at the moment. So I am going to go ahead and jump off here. I want to thank you guys all for spending some time with me today to go through this. I hope you found it helpful. If you do have questions as you're going, as you're dealing with this with your business, you can always reach out to us at COVID at elevatingprofits.com. Kelsey, can you drop that in the chat for me, please? Oh, look at that. She's on top of it. Love assistance that reads your mind. Um, so you can always email us there with questions. We're more than happy to answer those for you and respond back. I just do ask that you give us a little grace in our response time. Uh, some days we come into the office in the morning with over 200 emails between the staff and you know several messages voicemails and so we're working on getting responses out as quickly as we can so i do just ask that you be a little patient with us on that but 
You can always email us, uh, reach out on Facebook if you're connected with me there. If you're not connected with me there, I do encourage you to go ahead and follow either my business page or me personally, um, as I do drop in a lot of updates throughout the week in between any of these trainings I'm doing as well. Uh, Mariette, thank you. I appreciate you jumping on. Harlan, thank you as always. Harlan is a great resource and advocate with me that's constantly sending me updates he's finding as well. Um, Jamie, you are very welcome. I hope you found it helpful. And as always, any questions, please feel free to reach out. Otherwise, we are going to go ahead and jump off here today. And we will see you guys next Friday for the budget training. Make sure you get registered for that.